Welcome to the Pipe Support Information Center, your source for answers to pipe support questions and procedures in an all video format. The Information Center is brought to you by Lisaga. In this video, we will cover the basics such as what are pipe supports, why these products were developed over the past hundred years, and the general functions that they perform. We will also discuss the difference between static and dynamic supports and review the most common types of each that are used today. So what kind of a plant are you working on today? A refinery? A petrochemical plant? Perhaps a power plant that uses natural gas or coal as its fuel. Maybe it's an LNG plant, a nuclear generator, or a geothermal plant. All of these have multiple processes that move gases, fluids, and other media from one vessel or unit or plant to another. And the fastest way of transporting fluids of all kinds is through pipes. And where there is piping, there are many, many pipe supports. During plant construction, a structural steel frame like the one seen here colored in red is built to carry the weight of all the various pipes, valves, pumps, tanks, compressors, boilers, fluids, furnaces, turbines, decks, platforms, stairs, and the like. The structural steel is designed so that it can carry the total weight from each elevation down to the ground. In addition, the support structure absorbs all the forces that the plant's internal processes create, along with external forces such as those like wind, snow, and seismic events. Pipe supports are components that transfer the forces created from the piping system to the supporting structure. In addition, a major role that pipe supports play is allowing the piping to expand and contract due to temperature changes in the pipeline. As the temperature increases, pipes expand in all directions, and when the temperature decreases, they contract accordingly. And the piping acts in a consistent manner. A certain length of pipe will expand twice as much if it is heated by 400 degrees than if it is heated by 200 degrees. The four main functions of pipe supports are to 1. Properly support the pipe at the pipe support location. 2. Anchor the pipe where needed. 3. Guide the pipe where appropriate. And 4. Restrain the pipe and absorb shocks during unusual events different types of supports are used depending on what the piping engineer is trying to do at the support location. And that brings us to our next discussion point. As you recall, the two general categories of pipe supports are static supports and dynamic supports. The main difference between the two is that static supports are designed to handle everyday forces in either tension or compression, but not both while dynamic supports are designed to handle the everyday forces without issue, but also handle much stronger occasional forces where the support could be in either tension or compression, depending on what is happening with the pipeline. Here on the left, the two supports are clearly in tension, since they are pulling up on the pipe from above the pipe connection. And on the right, the support is pushing up on the pipe from below thereby putting this support in compression. And, as said earlier, our dynamic support can either be in tension or compression depending on how the pipe is acting on the support. Static pipe supports are designed to handle the everyday normal loads, such as gravity, meaning the dead weight of the piping and components. It also includes the weight of the insulation that surrounds the pipes. And, the weight of whatever is flowing through the pipe, such as steam, a slurry, or other media. Thermal movement includes the expansion and contraction of pipes and vessels that we discussed earlier. And finally, friction. This is usually caused by pipe movement while the pipe support is resting on something fixed. This is especially common when the pipe is supported from below. So let's take a look at some examples of static supports. Here we see different types of variable springs. The first three on the left would be installed above the pipe, and the two on the right would be installed below the pipe. Next are some constant force springs, shown in a similar fashion. The constants you see here are called lever arm constants. 
These are sway braces, and the one on top has a blue extension so it can reach a connection point farther away. Here we have rod hangers, which do not contain springs. Pipe shoes either bolt on or weld on to the pipe and can act as guides or anchors depending on your needs. They are often used in conjunction with slide plates like you see here. Pipe saddles are different from pipe shoes in that they are typically used with roller bearings like you see on the right. A vertical stand that is usually welded to the pipe is called a stanchion and this is a basic U-bolt that can be used as an anchor or a guide depending on how it is installed. Two of the most common static pipe supports that allow thermal expansion and contraction are variable force springs and constant force springs. The variable force spring, or just the variable as it is normally called, is the more commonly used of the two. As you can see here, it is really nothing more than a spring coil inside a can. From its original design many years ago, the variable spring was an ingenious solution to the problem of suspending the piping between vessels while also allowing thermal movement and at the same time building inherent and necessary stiffness into the piping system. It is called a variable spring because the force it applies to the pipe varies as the spring compresses or relaxes due to the pipe movement. In order to determine how much the force varies, we need to understand the concept of spring rate. Every spring made has a spring rate, and it is measured by the change in force the spring applies, divided by the change in distance that the spring moved. Pounds per inch, or newtons per millimeter, are common units used in imperial or metric units, respectively. In the example shown here, we have a spring with a spring rate of 100 newtons per millimeter. That means for every millimeter the spring moves, the force it applies changes by 100 newtons. If the spring moves 2 millimeters, the force changes by 200 newtons. 3 millimeters, the force changes by 300 newtons, and so on. In this case, the spring movement is 10 millimeters, and therefore, the force changed by 1,000 newtons. The stiffer the spring, the higher the spring rate. Your piping engineer selects the best spring rate and travel range for the conditions at the support location. Constant supports act quite differently than a variable. As their name implies, when a pipe moves from its cold position to its hot position, the force applied by the constant force spring never changes. It remains constant. Let's look at how this is accomplished. The three spring constant is made up of a main spring shown here in black and two compensating or helper springs shown in yellow. The goal in this example is for the spring to pull up on the pipe with a force of 50 kilonewtons throughout the entire range of pipe movement. At the location shown, the main spring is in its most relaxed position, and it is not applying any force to the pipe as this force diagram is showing. The yellow helper springs, however, are pushing on the two cams and the cams are pressing up on the rollers. At this pipe location, the helper springs are adding a total force of 50 kilonewtons thus accomplishing the goal. As the pipe moves down, the main spring compresses and adds more force as dictated by its spring rate. At the halfway point of the spring's travel, it is now applying 50 kilonewtons of force. The helper springs, cams, and rollers, however, are contributing no force whatsoever. So again, the goal is accomplished. Now let's move down to the bottom of the travel range. Here, the main spring coil is so compressed it's pulling up on the pipe with a force of 100 kilonewtons. The helper springs, cams, and rollers in their new position are subtracting a total force of 50 kilonewtons, yielding a net force on the pipe of 50 kilonewtons, again accomplishing our goal. A lever arm constant uses a different principle than the multi-spring constant. It employs only one spring and uses a series of lever arms, fulcrums, and pivot points as shown here to obtain a constant force throughout the travel range. This was the original constant force design that was not improved on until the 1960s when the three spring unit was designed. Plant owners often favor the two or three spring design for its versatility in handling a much broader range of loads than a lever arm constant. For instance, if there is a need to add or remove a pump or valve from a pipe run, then a multi-spring constant can simply be load adjusted on site 
This eliminates the need to purchase a replacement support, resulting in time and cost savings as the plant's requirements evolve. So, we have reviewed the common static supports, and now let's take a look at these three common dynamic supports that are designed to handle the much higher occasional forces that plants experience. First is a rigid strut. These consist of a metal tube anchored at one end and attached to the pipe using a clamp at the other. They can be set up on different or even multiple axes, as shown here, to contain the local forces. This is often necessary, for example, when there is an elbow in the piping and the medium inside exerts force on the pipe as it turns the corner. The strut will absorb the force acting on the pipe end and transfer it to the fixed end. Rigid struts are stock items that are available in numerous sizes to cover a range of loads and connection point dimensions and are further adjustable in length using the threaded connection and jam nut on each end. Pipe clamps that surround the pipe are also designed to static or dynamic specifications depending on the type of support to which they are connected. Dynamic clamps are engineered to a much higher degree than a simple three-bolt static clamp so that they can handle the higher forces in both tension and compression. Using a static pipe clamp on a dynamic support is not only against code, but it could lead to catastrophic failure. The second dynamic support we'll look at is the snubber, also called a shock absorber. Snubbers are designed to allow slow thermal pipe movement, but if the pipe accelerates quickly, perhaps caused by a sudden valve closure that generated a water hammer, then the snubber will lock up and act like a rigid strut. The goal of a snubber is to limit pipe movement under unusual forces and prevent damage to the piping system by absorbing and transferring the forces to the structural steel to which the snubber is connected. As with all pipe supports, snubbers come in a range of sizes from small, about the size of your forearm, to much larger equipment snubbers that are over 4 feet or 1.2 meters in length and weigh the same as an average new car. By adding from a choice of snubber extensions, you can customize the fit for your specific dimensions. Regarding the correct installation procedure of snubbers, there is a YouTube video on this pipe support information site that will guide you through the process. Lastly, let's take a brief look at viscoelastic dampers. In operational plants, unforeseen vibrations in piping and equipment are a common occurrence. These vibrations can stem from various factors but it's important to minimize them if their amplitude and frequency can cause harm to the piping system. While we know that energy cannot be created or destroyed, we can effectively convert the kinetic energy of vibrations into heat by using a damper. A viscoelastic damper has two main components and is installed by attaching one of them to the vibrating pipe or equipment and the other to a fixed structure or floor. Inside the damper, is a highly viscous substance that absorbs and dissipates the vibration energy by converting it into heat. To optimize the damping effect, different viscosity fluids are utilized based on the ambient temperature and the frequency of the vibrations. These dampers are effective across a wide range of vibration frequencies, making them versatile devices that have proven reliable in protecting piping systems. And that brings us to the conclusion of this video. We hope you now have a better understanding of why pipe supports are vital to the safe operation of a plant and a general understanding of the common pipe supports used.